Good morning and welcome to National Avenue Christian Church Disciples of Christ here in Springfield, Missouri. My name is Ashley Quinn. I am the Justice Coordinator here at the church and my pronouns are he, him, his. And we are so excited that you are here with us this morning to join in this online version of services. Uh, we are not meeting in our building right now. We're just doing this uh, online version of services. Uh, which you can find on Facebook Live, hopefully, uh, or maybe record it afterwards somewhere else. Um, excuse me. Uh, I am sitting here on my front porch. You are in your own uh, space at home, uh, and so let's try to make this space um, as as much like church today as we can. Uh, so there will be an online guide, uh, like a PDF that you can uh, pull up and download or print off if you want. Um, we uh, have that uh, linked in the caption part of this video or potentially in the comments as well. Uh, so you're invited to follow along, to sing along, to, uh, to, to respond as, uh, as, as, as called for. Uh, so uh, that, that document is available to you. Um, sometimes the cover of it is something you can color in as well, uh, if you'd like to color along as well. Uh, the next thing that we wanted to mention is that um, if you want to be in touch with us, uh, if you want to get on our email newsletter or you want to get text alerts, we've got a couple of ways to do that. Uh, so um, our email address at the church is hello at nationalavenuecc.com. That CC is, stands for the Christian Church there. So that hello at nationalavenuecc.com. Um, or for text alerts, you can text N-A-C-C-C, that's three C's, uh, to the number 81010. 81010. If you text N-A-C-C-C to that number, that'll get you set up for some text alerts with us. Um, now, as far as kind of making this space our service space, our worship space this morning, um, we invite you to bring a candle. Um, I have one that's that's uh, doubling. I made my own kind of uh, wrap around that, um, and uh, some matches uh, or lighter for you this morning. Uh, and then I have. Um, we also are going to do communion together. So with the candle, we'll have a point in the service um, where we'll invite you to, to light that candle when we all pray together. Um, and then for uh, communion, you can just grab whatever you have lying around your house. That's food and drink, or you could do something that combines the two. Uh, this morning, I have uh, little tiny muffins and uh, some cranapple juice, and so that that is my communion this morning. But whatever you have, um, that can be made holy, and that uh, can be in our sharing at the table this morning. Uh, let's see, what else do we have this morning? We also, uh, we will have a time where we invite prayer requests. If you'd like that to be more private, then you you uh, email Pastor Jen with J E N N two e two N's and Pastor Jen uh, to uh, at nationalavenuecc.com that same tail end. Um, I don't have all right. Pastor Jen at nationalavenuecc.com, and uh, so that will work for uh, sending some private prayer requests. Uh, and then your more public prayer requests, you can just drop those in the comment section on the Facebook Live. Uh, we will, there's a little bit of a time delay, so we have time to read those uh, and then to uh, read them aloud as part of our prayer. So uh, when that when that time comes, you'll you'll see and you'll be prompted, uh, and then one of one of the, our members will read those aloud. So towards the end of the service, we will share a link in the comments uh, for a Zoom meeting, and uh, that brings us together you can sign in and it's a free service and we can all join together with these little uh, boxes uh, and see each other and talk to each other and, uh, and get to do uh, just a little bit of fellowship at the end of service and then if we have a meeting if we have a board meeting or if we have a, a community collaborative meeting or a justice collaborative meeting or a spirituality collaborative meeting those can take place uh, after the service uh, in the breakout room of that zoom meeting so invite you to, to, to log into that. At that point, when, when we start bringing other people into the Zoom meeting, we won't be Facebook Live anymore, so don't worry about you being out on the internet or whatever. It'll just be uh, those of us who sign in uh, together. Uh, that, that will be part of that. Um, and yeah, I think that's all of the like nuts and bolts kind of stuff that we wanted to share with you this morning. Uh, we do have uh, a few more minutes now, so if you need to gather those things up, gather those things up, and then just sit and breathe 
And if you're outside, listen to the birds chirping. Um, or if you're inside, listen to your kids bouncing around. Um, and just take a minute to get present and to uh, really center yourself. And uh, there will be a little piano music played by our music director, Jonathan Rainey. And then, um, and then Joseph will play the chimes for us. And that will be a cue that we are starting service. So thank you again. We are so excited that you are here. Welcome to National Anthem Christian Church.
Come in from the night. It is a new day, and this is where love lives. Take off your coat, let the weight fall off your shoulders, for here you are known, here you are loved. Come in from the rain, we can do anything together. We can survive together. When the world unveils from under your feet, come in, come in, come in. God is here. You are home. You will never be alone. Let us worship the God who weaves us together. God, too often it feels the light is gone. Things fall apart, things change, things unravel. We cannot see hope's glow in our mist. And yet you remind us, you are there. In the spaces that feel impossible, in the spaces that are a mess, the light of Christ, the light of this community is here. Our strength burns brighter when we remind one another, your light is in our midst. The light of Christ is here with us. Good morning, church. It is so good to be gathered with you on porches, in our homes, in cars, wherever you are taking church with you today. It's good to be gathered together as the folks who claim and know the spirit is with us. Sometimes it is hard to muster and see and feel that spirit and yet we come together and we claim that love is here and we proclaim it together. 
There are a few things I want to share about the life of the church. Just a couple of things. If you're new to this space, uh, if you didn't bring a candle, you're welcome to run and grab one now. We will be sharing communion, which can be anything that you find in your home. It can be a cracker. I have a muffin this morning and my coffee for communion. So that can be anything. We'll reclaim the spirit and the wideness of um, a welcoming table. During the time of prayer, uh, we will invite you to share any prayer request. Uh, we do want to remind you that this is public space, so anything you put here uh, will be shared publicly. Uh, if you have prayer requests that you'd like to send directly to me, you can send them to Pastor Jen, J-E-N-N, at nationalavenuecc.com. Um, and again, we will share those prayers out loud and you can begin sharing them at any time. It doesn't have to be just during the prayer time if you have some um, that you'd like to go ahead and list now in the space. Next Sunday, um, I believe that is the 23rd uh, of August, we have a really exciting opportunity. We're going to try something called walking church. So what is going to happen from 1230 to 330, the sanctuary will be open. We are asking that you sign up for a time spot. So you can find us on our Facebook page or again, send us a message and we can give you um, that sign up sheet. But what will be happening is we will be walking through the church um, through prayer stations and saying prayers out loud. So the, again, will be time spots. We do ask that you bring a mask. If you don't have one, we'll provide one for you. Um, and we'll move through the space and take an opportunity to be holding prayers for one another. If there are prayers that you would like for us to hold in that space, um, we encourage you again to email those to me or you can share those in our comments. If you're one who would like to help hold that sacred space, there's opportunity to, to sign up and be a part of helping to hold that space um, as well. So again, that is next Sunday from 1230 to 330. Then the following Sunday on August 30th, uh, we'll be having a congregational meeting. So this is something we're a, a couple months behind on that, but something we do semi-annually. Um, and this, we get the opportunity to celebrate and vote on a new slate of officers for the church, as well as at this meeting, we'll be sharing a bunch of information about what's been happening in the church, what's going to happen, etc. cetera. So um, that will be a space on Zoom. We won't broadcast that live. Um, it will be in Zoom, but there are lots of ways to connect to that. And if you didn't get information through the avenues about that, and have any questions, you can contact us. But just want to make sure that's on your calendar and you know that that's coming up. There are, of course, other ways to connect. We are still at Grace on Monday nights um, and helping to provide meals uh, for our neighbors who are unsheltered and other things throughout the church. We hope that you'll sign up to get more information about what's happening in the life of the church and how you can connect. But for today, we're glad you're here. Thank you for welcoming us into your home. Thank you for coming together to be church in this radically different way, but to, to show up, to be together and proclaim that love is here and love is alive in the midst of all the things. Let us turn to the scriptures this morning, the Hebrew scriptures, as we hear a word um, and listen to see what might be there for us this morning. This is from Job chapter 28. But wisdom, where can it be found? Where is the place of understanding? Humankind doesn't know its value. It isn't found in the land of the living. The deep says, it's not with me. The sea says, not alongside me. It can't be bought with gold. Its price can't be measured in silver can't be weighed against gold from Ophir with precious onyx or lapis lazuli. Neither gold nor glass can, can compare with it. She can't be acquired with gold jewelry. Coral and ja jasper shouldn't be mentioned. The price of wisdom is more than rubies. Cushite topaz won't compare with her. She can't be set alongside pure gold. But wisdom. but wisdom, where does she come from? Where is the place of understanding? She's hidden from the eyes of all the living, concealed from birds of the sky. Destruction and death have said, we've heard a report of her. God understands her way, knows her place. For they look to the ends of the earth and surveys everything beneath the heavens in order to weigh the wind, to prepare a measure for waters. When they made a decree for the rain, a path for thunderbolts, then they observed it, spoke of it, established it, searched it out. 
and said to humankind, look, the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Turning from evil is understanding. These are the stories of unraveling. Thanks be to God. It's an interesting exercise to approach the book of Job with children, a little trepidation and confidence in the author of our family story Bible, Ralph Milton, who did a wonderful job. Um, and as always, the children come back with deeper wisdom than sometimes we adults can find in our unraveling. So here's what your story keepers had to say about this story this week. Because Job, no matter what happened to him, uh, he always tried to live in God's way. Take something away, you can't make me stop. Caring and sharing just makes me me. You can't make me fuss. God is all I was God. We hear all we all hear God's call. We don't understand everything, but we know that God that God loves us. Thank you. Yes, there are many questions that grown ups and children try and try and can't find the answers to, but isn't it reassuring to know that in the midst of all that, God loves us. As we come into a time of prayer, I encourage you to continue adding your prayer requests to put them in the comments or again, to send them along. But I hope that you will take a moment. If you haven't lit your candle or lit your candle to go ahead and light your candle, to know that love is burning in our midst, to catch your breath, to breathe and to feel the spirit just as close as your breath with you this morning. If you do have something to color, if um, however you center yourself in the space, whether that's closing your eyes or leaning in a little deeper to listen to the wind or the birds, or savoring that cup of coffee, however you find yourself, let us gather for just a few moments of silence as we feel and lean into the spirit here with us. Holy God, we have been angry because we see suffering and we do not understand. We have been skeptical because we know heartbreak that doesn't seem fair. We have withheld love because sacrifice only feels real when it's our own. Forgive us for forgetting that you have created the heavens and the earth. Forgive us for withholding our pain from you. Forgive us for thinking that we know everything. When the world falls apart around us, when love unravels and life slowly fails, draw us in, show us grace. For you gave the wind its weight and you gave our bodies life. Forgive us for forgetting that. Together as this community, we offer our prayers for Marla, for safe travels. We hold Byron Moore and the entire Moore family as he begins chemotherapy this week. We hold all of those that are struggling with addiction. We pray for teachers and students and parents for those going back to school, we pray for all those college students who are returning to campus this week. We pray for professors, for all the staff that are holding, holding it, the difficulty there. We pray for postal workers this morning, for those facing uncertainty, 
for all those looking for employment on this day, oh God. We pray for those we know and we love whose worlds are unraveling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. This past week, a few of you shared an article by John Pavlots, Pavlots called The Missing Year. So author, writer, pa pastor John, he talks about inviting folks to share things that they have missed this year. Birthdays, celebrations, trips, family events, funerals. Now, he didn't share the entire list of all the things that people wrote into him, but it was evident the list, especially in its entirety, made a huge impact on him. Pavlitz wrote this. He said, I don't think I was prepared for the scope and the depth of each of the losses, each one entirely specific, yet universal and painfully reminding us that we are all carrying the grief of lives we thought we would be living right now. We are continually mourning our missed events, our changed plans, our might have been years. The accumulated sadness is more than any of us can calculate. Whew, if those words do not resonate. Most of us can name and articulate loss and grief and things not going as planned. I mean, that's part of humanity. We know that that's part of our shared story. It's, it's part of life. Even as we can say that that is true, it can be difficult to find ways to deal with that grief on the daily, right? So it is those large events and it is the small collections of moments that continue to unravel when we least expect and the many, many months of living in this very different season of anything that we ever anticipated or could have hoped for, right? I appreciate how John says this. He says that it shows up in these, these kind of ways. Here's, here's what he says. He writes that prevalent pain is just beneath the surface for all of us. And it shows up throughout our days, right? In our angry outbursts at the takeout lines, in our quick temper with our children, in our knee jerk, our knee jerk tirades on social media, in our muffled screams into our pillows in our ever present fatigue. Again, right? Just saying those words out loud, I'm pretty sure I've done all of those. While some of us are able to give those moments voice, which is so important right now. It's key that we can say them, that we can name them. Sometimes it does, it feels insurmountable to be able to name all of them, right? And yet they are driving our emotions. They are right there under the surface with us in all new kinds of ways, physically in our bodies right now. So before we go on to the text, as Jody's already said, kind of a challenging one for this morning, I'm wondering if, if just even hearing that, some of the reactions you're hearing, it's beginning to stir something in you. I'd love for you to take a moment to release and name some of those spaces. So whatever it is, the thing you're grieving, again, doesn't matter if it's a big event, small event, all the things in between in this day. So if you've got that moment in you right now, maybe it's just saying it out loud, wherever you're at, just, just say it, just say the thing. Maybe it's to go ahead and you can write it in the chat this morning. Okay, remember, it's, it's a public space, but if it's helpful for you just to spend a minute and just write it down, just so we can be holding that with you. Maybe it's going ahead and sharing it with a friend or a companion, whatever these places of grief, of the thing that you're missing, um, just to send a text to somebody or an email and let them know and ask them to hold it with you. While we can't name all of them, I think that there is absolute power in beginning to name them and release release some of them and know that we hold them together. Okay, so this morning, as you're still working on that, that's fine. Take as long as you need with that space. This morning, we look to the words of Job for comfort. I know, maybe, maybe comfort, maybe solidarity, maybe understanding, maybe, maybe more likely we're going to find a lot more questions here in this story. The chapter we heard this morning is often referred to as the hymn of wisdom, possibly and likely added later to the story, connecting with a larger wisdom tradition that we find in Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. But when we look at the whole story of Job, we see this tale of somebody whose world is falling apart. 
everything that he holds dear, his wealth, his family, his property, his health, every single thing is taken away. It's a tale of collection of conversations, of lament, of suffering. Job walks into the depths of these experiences in an attempt to make sense of what has happened in life. When Job's life unravels, he seeks answers to make sense of his suffering. Job insists he has done right, right? He's lived the best he can. And when you live a good life, you're supposed to get a good life back, right? That's how it's supposed to work. Right. That's one way the story has been told or one way we, we look for answers. This morning at Pajama Church, right before it started, Pastor Jody was just talking about this story and reminding us, this is a play. Thank, thank goodness this is not necessarily a story of something that happened to someone, but this is a, a play that pushes our edges. It's a great tale that walks us deeper into these really difficult questions that we long to answer. Why is this happening? Michael Coogan, an Old Testament scholar, writes this, perhaps the ambiguity of Job's final response to Yahweh and the whole book as a whole, it's, it's deliberate. There is no answer, right? There is no easy answer to the problem of suffering. No formula that can adequately explain any of this. We're left with a bit of a mystery here. In pain, in grief, in loss, there aren't simple formulas that will explain or solve suffering. Being good does not mean that goodness follows. Life just happens. Why and how then becomes this, this next how. How do we live in the midst of the mystery of God? There are some of us who really want answers. Why does the terrible thing keep happening? It seems like if we had the answer, maybe we could prevent some of it from happening or at least explain it or understand it, maybe. There are some of us who believe that God's holding all this and we don't need to find any understanding. The tale of Job really pushes that one, right? But there's something in this story that really sticks out to me. Job stays in conversation with God. In the midst of the deep suffering and sorrow, and in the awful things that keep happening, Job keeps talking with God. The conversation doesn't stop. Job leans in. Maybe leaning in, and leaning into that mysterious space looks like not holding or just looking for simple answers. Maybe it means staying present, naming the suffering, naming the pain, saying it out loud, to keep asking questions and let the questions come and to keep showing up. Here we are, even though it looks a lot different, we're still showing up, we're listening to one another, we're listening to God in our midst as best we can. And while reflecting on that, there's a writer from Enfleshed Liturgy. We use a lot of their words. Writer Sandra Powell, she, she talks about that. Um, she's going a little different direction with this, but she's talking about exactly the complexity of trying to, to, to be present and what that looks and feels like in this moment. So she claims this presence and this space and this mystery by, by writing and saying it this way. The truth is, whether we feel it or not, the whole world is open, is listening is receptive, is with us. And while there are many moments pointing to the contrary, you are seen and held with gentle care. You are seen and held by the trees, by the sky, and by the objects around you. And while I might not be able to show my attentiveness in the way that I want to right now, if you look around and pay attention to it, I promise that that open care is already there and listening. While it's hard for me to let go of my control and grips on these reins, I have to trust that that love will find you, that you will be held. And I'm praying you can connect with that openness, whatever form it takes, and be drawn in by its open ears, eyes, leaves, pages, and desire to hold you in your being. Pain is going to happen. Suffering is going to happen. We can't reduce these complex moments of our lives to simple, easy answers. I know we know that. I know we know that. But as things continue to unravel and they come back together for a moment and then unravel again and come back together and then unravel again, we can discover and rediscover together that God is right there in the midst of it. God is in these spaces. God's radical love is embracing us through all of it. 
This morning, I, I have a prayer from Nadia Boltz Weber. It came right as I was finishing this piece this morning as she talks about that, about each of us taking turns falling apart. <laughs> I don't think I can <clears throat> read this one without crying. Ooh. But I want you to hear this prayer by Nadia Boltz Weber. May it be for all of us. Hear, hear these words. Dear God, we're gonna just be taking turns for a while if that's okay. Yesterday was mine. It was my turn to be depressed. Depressed as hell about losing the closing beloved ones, those stores that we had had for look or for decades. It was my turn to be afraid because the wildfires are so bad that my eyes sting and the internet is closed. It was my turn to be angry. My turn to indulge in the post-apocalyptic future casting. Please help me not to feel bad when it's my turn, Lord. And with your grace, may my turn to completely freak out not last one minute longer than necessary, but also may it last as long as it needs to in order to allow it to pass when it's time to move on and go make the salad for dinner. And Lord, may I be a non-anxious presence to the next person whose turn it is. May I not fear their fear so much that I fail to listen well. When I have even the tiniest extra bit of hope, may I offer it without fear of being judged for not pay attention. And may I remember that my terror is not a sign of your absence and my hope is not a sign of your presence because, oh God, you never take turns. You are always there. May we feel it. May it be so. Amen. In every heart there is a room, a sanctuary safe and strong, to heal the wounds from lovers past, until
So the prayer threw me off guard too, Jen. Thanks. Um, I wanted to come here this morning and just say, give the money, support, support, support. These are the people. This is, but I guess maybe it might be time to share a story about my 2020 and how all of these people that are on Facebook Live and many more were there too and are still there. 2020 was a I mean, it's a lot for everyone. I began this year losing my godmother to cancer. And it hit me pretty hard because I had lost uh, both of my grandmothers in the past year and a half. And it was tough. So I was like, okay, 2020 is going to be our year, Carlo. We got this. And so it started with death. I was like, okay, we're going to process this. We're going to go on. And... I work in the hospitality industry. There wasn't time to process. In March, all of the COVID started and you have to take care of people. You have to be kind to people. In this COVID, I have seen so many things that I wish I could never, I've never had to see. People not taking care of their, their friend and their community. Um, almighty dollar being more important than an individual's health, the public's health, the children's health. In May, I, uh, I lost my job in the hospitality industry. And let me tell you, being a hospitality manager or people that are born to serve others in a pandemic, when your therapist and everyone you love says, stop, you have taken care of everyone so eloquently and gracefully through your entire life. Stop and lean into this, to lean into this sadness. Okay, I'm not good at that, seriously. I mean, I'm not that girl, I'm joy. I'm the happy, I'm ready to dance every day. I'm waking up saying and rise and shine and give God the glory. And it's not like that anymore right now. I know that one day it will be like that again, but right now during a pandemic, all I'm going to do is give the best of Dina to this community. That's what we have to do every day. If we choose to walk outside, if we choose to call people, if we choose to love, you have to do it radically. You have to, you have to just get back to the basics of life, of just loving people because you're supposed to and treating them equally because equality doesn't really hurt anyone. So in a world that's suffering so much, I'm suffering with you. I am, lean into it. I know it's so hard, but I, when just when you think it's hard, you have that. It's you know you have that center of of your entire heart saying you know get up, keep getting up every day, no matter how much you don't want to get up, how disappointed you are in your community and your fellow people and how they're taking, using you know, reacting to COVID. Watch them. Just. This place has saved my life. I reached out to a couple of you throughout this time because I don't, again, not sure how to deal with all this. I don't know grief and I'm just not comfortable with it. And one of you says, hey, I know someone, you need to talk to this person. It saved my life talking to this therapist and just telling her just how ridiculously upset I am. And to hear people say that 
you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just let it go. It does matter. Every time you hear an injustice, it matters. Stand up. This, this church does stand up. I'll, I'll go to bat for any, anyone. And I will tell anyone who is ready and willing to listen. When all is said and done in the community, the community really that correlates with who I am is the people at National Avenue. Not once has it weathered or stood not strong. It's a family. And what we do for this community is going to make the biggest difference because honestly, we're the only ones that do it with just such a genuine grateful heart and not because we have to, but because we should and we want to. So this morning I say, give money. <laughs> this, this is the place, this is, if you have an extra dollar, an extra $2, Whatever, please, this morning's offering will now be given and received. Mm -hmm. Trumpets, 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 we 
shall make new. Friends and community, we remember that the well being of all life is interconnected. We turn from individualism and self sufficiency and practice solidarity with one another in joy and struggle. By sharing what we have, striving for collective freedom, and giving and receiving in mutual love. We honor God's intentions for life and create openings for the flourishing we desire. In faith, let us bring our offerings together. Through Jesus' name we ask, amen. We bring our loose ends to the table, the places that feel too frayed. At the table, we are reminded of your deepest connection with us. God, you meet us in all places in our lives. You are in the simplest of meals. You are there in our questions. You are there in our unraveling. You are there. So we gather with the simple things from our home, longing to remember and remember the pieces that come unraveled. No matter how we arrive in this space today, we say yes to love. We remember how Jesus took bread, what he could find on the table, how he broke it, blessed it, and gave thanks. This is my body, given in love. And then took a cup, what was on the table for the meal, raised it, blessed it, and gave thanks. This is the cup of hope for every one of you. As we share the things of our lives, may we find a new spirit of love here. <clears throat> so sorry. I apologize. I needed a minute. Oh. Healing one. We come to our tables with thanks and with awe. Your grace goes beyond us, before us, and makes even the most painful of ruptures potential site of new love. We pray that whenever we are called to account for harm done as individuals, the church, or extensions of legacies of violence, we would show up with honesty, with repentance, and a fierce commitment to transformation that is lasting and restorative. 
May it always be so among us. Amen. I think that I'm supposed to, uh, where's the unmute button? Is it good? Okay. So I believe that I'm supposed to introduce the passing of the piece, but honestly, everything that I had just left my mind with everyone's tears. Um, you all are so reflective of what I'm feeling. I wish I could reach through the technology and hug everyone. I miss that. I desperately, desperately miss being able to recharge myself with all of your hugs and just your physical presence. So thank you for being open and raw and real as a church. Um, I think that's all I have to say about that. Is there something I'm supposed to be doing? Just waiting for a video. I'm for the journey. being here with us this morning. Thank you for being present to one another, even without the hug in this space. We know as we keep each other safe, as we tend to one another, we gather here. The In the comment section, you will see we have shared an opportunity to join us in the Zoom fellowship space. If you would like to join in after uh, these words for the journey, we invite you to join us here. 
Faithful ones, the grace of God goes with us into the messiness of life, extending to us peace in the midst of what is unfinished, untidy, unclear, or unresolved. With steadfast patience, let us go from here encouraged in the labors of love, pressing on through the complexities and staying present to the troubles that call to our attention within us, between us, and around us. Blessed be our journeys of healing and transformation. May it be so. Amen. May it be so for us.